Welcome back to another episode of Stupid Geek Tricks with your head clown, Eli the Computer Guy. So today what we're working with is we are trying to create a voice-activated IoT device that uses artificial intelligence on the back end. So the idea here is I am able just to speak to this little computer, it's able to interpret what I'm saying, and then in the future it'll actually be able to do something based off of it. What we're currently doing is basically I'm talking into this, and then what we're going to be doing is simply printing this out onto an HTML document, so it will show up here in the web browser. So this web browser is going to auto refresh. It auto refreshes like every two seconds. So basically when I put a new query in, it'll show the new query up here and then it will give the AI response down here. So with this, uh, I am using Olama. So the Olama is the LLM framework that is just awesome. And then what is even more awesome is IBM's Granite model. So we are using Granite 3.32B for this particular project. As you'll see, it works pretty well. Uh, basically locally on a Raspberry Pi 5, and for its small size, it actually gives good results. Um, Pi 3 uh, by Microsoft, you know, for its small size, you know, functions... <laughs> functions on a Raspberry Pi, but you get some very quirky results. Uh, Tiny Llama, you know, that exists. Uh, what I can tell you is that Granite 3.3 uh, 2B actually works uh, pretty darn good here. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to talk into this. So this is actually a teeny tiny little microphone here. Works pretty well. Honestly, works better than this microphone. If you looked at these two microphones, which one do you think would be better? The answer is not this one. Uh, it is in fact this one. So we're gonna talk into this. What is going to happen is this is connected to the, the network, so it's connected to the internet. We are going to be using Google's API, uh, their voice services, uh, to turn my voice into speech. That is gonna be turned into a variable value. Basically, that is then going to be sent to Olama, and then Olama is going to present the results here. And uh, so let's, oops. <laughs> Let's uh, show this to you working right now. So I can go here to my little command prompt. I can just do the up, so Python 3, this is the code that I'm running. Uh, we're running it now, adjusting for ambient noise. Say something, you can pause briefly. That gave me an error. How much chuck could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So you got that going on. Now we got the answer. What is a woodchuck? What is a groundhog? How do you defend yourself if a groundhog attacks you? Can I ride a groundhog like I ride a horse? Can I ride a groundhog like I ride a horse? So there you go. No, you cannot, in fact, ride a groundhog like you ride a horse. So, I mean, you know, uh, there you go. Uh, that is not too shabby. So basically, all the LLM processing is being done locally, and you can see the response uh, is relatively quick. So I have put a prompt injection here to limit the response to, only, to 20 words or less. So that's a valuable thing, especially when you have a small system here. That's one of the reasons the responses are short. And the nice part about making the response short is it takes less, uh, less required system requirements in order to do it. Uh, but basically, this is literally what a Raspberry Pi 5 can do. Uh, now with this, what I could do is if I put keywords in here and I do other things, uh, I've shown this in some of the Silicon Dojo AI classes before, uh, I could trigger function calls, I could trigger events to happen, I could trigger agents, that type of thing. Uh, and with this, again, the LLM component is local. Just as a warning, just as a warning, the speech recognition, speech recognition goes up to Google, 
because everything goes up to Google, and then we get the text back. Then past that, the LLM is local. So that's kind of one of those things to think about with architecture. I have not found a good local speech recognition system yet. Uh, that is one thing I will be looking for going on in the future. But this kind of gives you an idea of what the project that I am is do uh, that I'm doing. Uh, I was trying, I was trying to play around with this on this Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero W version one, version one, and what I found out about version one is not even web browsers. <laughs> web browsers don't even work because apparently this is ARM v6 architecture uh, and those are ARM v... No, this is ARM v8 architecture. This is ARM v6 architecture. So there's a lot of wonky stuff with ARM v6 architecture. So anyways, this is what I'm currently playing with. And these are the types of labs and projects that we do at Silicon Dojo. We are having this Raspberry Pi. Was it pushing AI to the edge using Raspberry Pi? That class is coming up. Uh, I do believe it's January 7th. If you're interested, uh, this is this is one. This is one of the many labs that we'll be doing in that particular class. If you're interested, take a look at silicondojo.com. Uh, do remember, there's a donor blocks link down below. Free to end user is not actually free. Uh, that costs money, and that costs money, and that costs money, and that costs money. Even when it's a piece of crap, still costs money. Anyways, there's a donor box link down below if you want to throw some money in. Uh, but this is what I've been playing with. See you all later.